The very first punch Lester hit me with, which was one of his greatest punches, was the left rip, and it hit my right elbow, and it skidded under and hit me in the lower side of my abdomen, under well below my ribs, and I, I felt something rip. The very first, and it was like a like a knife stuck in me. The big one, and it's and it's been you know touted as one of the biggest fights. You're an underdog yep. in that fight. You talk about the old, the old dog. Yeah. The, old, the old dog, 30 year old. Lester was 20 years, yep. old, uh, years of age. And even, you know, the money was coming for him. They were backing him. They sure. didn't think you could get to the weight. Can you can you talk, talk some about and, that? And when you say they were backing him, I don't think there's some stories around who, <laughs> oh, they, yeah. are, who they, they were. Who they I'm just <laughs> saying they, all right? I'm sorry. No, I mean, no comment. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, the story with Lester, I mean, as I said, I used to go around a lot of gyms and spa, whoever was available. And, um, at, you know, when Lester was 12, I went to the, and I was 22, I went to the Glen Gala boxing gym and I sparred about eight, Young young lads, and you know, used to show them things and and nurture them. And if and if they were good enough to have, have a crack at me, well, you know, I'm, you know, hit them a bit harder, sort of thing, and just <laughs> keep them in line. But Lester, I got out the ring after sparring all these young lads, and I said, "What's this kid's name?" They said, "Lester Ellis." He was twelve. I said, "This kid's a world champion." And then I became, you know, good friends with him and Graham Brooks, who I also had to fight. Graham. Brooks, uh, Lionel's first cousin, who went to, I think, 19 and 0 before he fought me. Um, and Lester, Oh, you took who, his zero? Yeah, I took his zero and, and Lester's <laughs> as well. But, you know, with Lester, I I was rapt to see him win a world title. I hadn't fought at that weight in a decade. And, and um, you know, I said to my dad one day, I said, Dad, um, I'm going to challenge Lester. And he said, what, a, a non-title fight? And I said, no, I'm going to challenge him for the title. And he said, son, you can't make the weight. And I said, Dad... I'll do it. I'll do it if I have to do it. And I went. I did it all correctly. I went to a dietitian. I had my fat content weight underwater, and I found that I should have probably been fighting at that weight or even lighter the whole way through. And a month before the fight, um, one of Lester's crew, the, the late Alphonse Gangitano, rang me up and said, "Do you need more tickets?" And I said, "Yes, I do." I said, "But stop backing Lester." He said, "No, no." He said, I "Love you, both like brothers." Sure. Oh <laughs> he, yeah, yeah we'll said, get to that. <laughs> he said, uh, "I'm not, I'm not betting on this fight." And, and I said, "Look, I know you are." Oh, I said, "He can't beat me," and it was true. One month before we fought, I'd actually done a did a trial weigh-in where I made fifty-eight point nine five, which is nine stone four, one hundred and thirty pound, um, which I hadn't done in a decade, and I'd fought as high as about one hundred and forty-three or ten stone three, and uh, so you know, a stone difference is, is a fair bit for someone that's fit and you know in good condition, and uh, I realised that at, at that weight I could still have the strength and and maintain. They'd never thought I'd be able to fight the fifteen round distance, but it was was the best thing I ever did and they fell into it I didn't think they would and anyway I just, as it turns out you know I, you know won a 15 round war with Leicester but uh, it didn't start off well I'll tell you because before the fight there was you know a lot of bad blood was built between the two of us even though we're great mates today and we were great mates as you know when he was coming up and I was rapt to see him win the world title but we came to centre ring and he, he just started saying because I taught him to talk to opponents too while you're fighting because oh, I still yeah. always talk to my opponents, especially if you hit them a good one, you go, and they go, oh, you go, that hurt you, didn't it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit statistic, I know. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we came to centre ring and, and I just said to Lester, thanks for the title, Lester, and he just started saying, you're effed, you're effed. You can read it as clear as a bell. He said, you're going down, I'm going yeah. to knock you out. And I called him, I said, listen, you young um, I think a lady's sexual organ or something like that. I called him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick your effing backside tonight, and and the, the, yeah, it was really bad blood. But when we came, when the bell rang, we came came out. The very first punch Lester hit me with, which was one of his greatest punches, was the left rip, and it hit my right elbow, and it skidded under and hit me in the lower side of my abdomen, under well below my ribs, and I, I felt something rip. The very first, and it was like a like a knife stuck in me. Just the very first shot he hit me with. And then so the that pain, adversity. Yeah. Then the pain was gone though, and I got on with the job, and I forgot about it. But after the fight, I was passing blood, and it was the first time I ever did. But Lester, he passed blood for about a month after the fight. He was he was you know pretty beaten up. We were both beaten up. He broke my nose in round twelve, uh, and the Joe Bugner was commentating with. Um, 
who was he doing it with? Uh, Tim um, Tim Lane, that's right. And Joe Bugner in round 12, all of a sudden Lester smashes me with a big right hand and it, by then you're beyond pain and you're beyond exhaustion and I'm not feeling the, the punches, that's for sure. And all of a sudden I just realised that blood's streaming down my nose and running off my cheek, chin and I figured my nose is busted and Joe Bugner picked it up during the commentary said Barry Michaels has just copped a massive right hand it looks like his nose blo- is busted the, the blood's pouring out of his nose and you know anyway the bell rings and I go back to the corner I sit, sit down and dad's in the gets in the ring and wrote the great late Ray Styles, who got me in the best condition of my life he goes great round great round three rounds your champion in the world I said, he's broken me F and nose. He goes, forget it, forget it. And I'm looking for some sympathy. Three rounds, you're champion in the world. I said, but he, he's broken me. That never happened in 56 fights, you know. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I forgot about it and it was no big issue after that, you know. Uh, and would it be fair to say uh, Alphonse backed the wrong horse? <laughs> oh, for sure. They were paying off for months and months. Huh. And did you Did you have your followers that... That got involved? I had, uh, yeah, there was the late Jackie Tucker who passed away only a few months ago too. Jackie made a fortune on me. He, yeah. <laughs> he used to come and watch all the sparring sessions and he, he wouldn't say much, but he'd he'd always bet back me. He won a lot when I fought Frank Ropus on Ash Wednesday. He won a fortune when I beat Leicester. Yeah, he did. He be backed me against Al Carter, which no one gave me a chance against Al Carter, who was 23 knockouts in 24 fights. Um, yeah, so, you know, there was guys that, you know, in my circle that, always had a quit on me and one of them the biggest punter of the lot was Jack Tucker the great late Jackie Tucker the chicken man who uh, a beautiful bloke and yeah he he won a lot of money on me yeah bloody good bloody good so so you you world champion you world champion and I think you went the 15 rounds I think yeah, went 15. watching watching it it looks like looks like you nailed him late but yeah but went, it went the time did it yeah it went 15 threes it was um round 3 he he, he caught me with an uppercut what happened was round three, all of a sudden, Gus Mercurio, who was the referee, stepped between us and um, warned me for punching low. And uh, and I sort of was in shock and he said, box on. And Lester sidestepped me, picked me up with an uppercut and, and you know, crashed me with his right hand. And I was in Disneyland, seriously. <laughs> and he knew he was a – Lester was one of the – had more killer instinct than almost anyone I ever fought – and he just bombarded me and he – and I, you know, experience got me through it and I went to a show and I, I caught most of them on the gloves and shoulders and top of the head and he just bombarded me and I hit him a couple of body shots while he was, you know, bombarding me and finally when he slowed up, I got up close to him and I said to him, that's the best you can do, you want to forget it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was round three and from then on I started taking over and as the fight progressed I, I sort of got on top and – uh you know, down the stretch, you know, there was no doubt. And, you know, if you watch the documentary, A Melbourne Story, a lot of people, because they show the highlights of Leicester with these brilliant combinations and that, but it's only minutes of, of the actual fight. I say to people, watch the whole 15, three-minute round, because yeah. there might have been a few rounds I did lose, but the majority of my won convincingly. And I think it was five, six, and seven points on the judges' scorecard. Mm-hmm.